Hello. I'm going to be learning how to make games in Python. My goal is to hopefully be able to make a successful game. This is something that I heard about at PyCon, which I attended um, just last week. And it's something that I hope is going to be enjoyable to um, to be able to make games easily and quickly. Unfortunately, um, I've had a lot of issues with trying to get up and running with any Python projects. I attended several sprints and just everyone had problems. And I thought that since the creator of the Python Arcade I like library is not available um, right now, but I would record myself trying to learn more about it and be able, hopefully, to get it up and running so that he can have the information, if anything does go wrong, um, for creating better usability. So I asked him to send me information because I was very interested in the project, and he sent me this link. It is a uh, pythonhosted.org slash arcade and it looks like there's an introduction video that um, I tried watching before I realized that like I want to watch this together so let's see if this will work. Arcade, arcade is an easy to use Python, Python game, game library. You, you can, can use it to create 2D arcade, arcade games, Minesweeper games, Hangman games, games 2048 or, or other similar types of games. Not, not sure if the arcade, arcade library has what you want? want? Check out the example code, code section. Some of the examples even include a video walkthrough. This example shows how you can create images with basic drawing commands. You don't even have to know how to define a function, write an if statement, or use a loop. But once you do learn those concepts, you can start using sprites, which allow you to write platformer and shoot em up style games. To quickly see the list of all commands available in the arcade library, use the quick index. For more detail, see the full API documentation. You, you can, can even see the source code for each of the commands as well. Installation is covered in this section over here. There's separate instructions for Windows, Linux, and Macintosh. But for the most part, you can probably do a pip install arcade if you're familiar with using pip install to bring in Python packages. Okay, that's a very informative video. I am running a Windows machine, so I'm going to click on Install Instructions and try and get it installed on my machine. I had a precursor to this because I have been trying to get a few Windows machines up and running. I have already installed Python, and I have um, changed the path on my computer to allow me to access Python whenever I type in Python, it'll pull up Python 2, version 2.7, and when I type in Python 3, it should pull up Python 3. Um, it sh it's either 3.4 or 3.5. I had 3.4 originally, and then we were having some difficulties, and I downloaded and reinstalled it, and I think when I reinstalled, I was able to reinstall 3.5. So, I have Python installed. I can pull up my um, command line and just test it. And I have a dual monitor, so you can't see um, that right now. So it looks like I have um, Python 3.5.1. And when I type in Python um, dash V, it should tell me the version. Oh, and I'm running Python right now, so how it always throws me. Okay. Okay. And exiting Python is always interesting as well. So, let's see if I can clear. Okay, my cat's in the background. I'm going to close my command prompt and reopen it so that you can see what I'm doing because I think that would be more interesting. Now, sadly, this doesn't display the whole screen, but Python 3 and that was your
Ah, uh, no, it's not what I wanted. Control Z. What? Okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> Python dash capital V. Python three dash capital V. Okay. That's interesting. I hope I don't need Python 2 because it looks like I have Python 3.5 as my Python and Python 3.4 as my Python 3. I think I can update that in my past, maybe? I don't know. Whenever I was reinstalling, I must have messed it up. Like I said, I am prone to making mistakes. Okay, so it looks like the next step is to be able to do pip install. So, eh, why does it want to display properly? Okay. So, I'm going to try pip install arcade, which it says right there I should be able to do. Let's see if this works. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. I typed it in correctly. There it goes. It's collecting the arcade. <laughs> and it's downloading it. And this is boring, we're just watching it install. So it looks like the main parts are downloaded. We have installed um, Arcade, Piglet, Pillow, Numpy. Um, and those all look like they are specific installs as dictated by um, the arcade. <coughs> While that's downloading and installing, I don't even know if it shows up on the screen. I thought that I would also explore their website. So let me make this a little bit narrower. And I can move this sideways. Well, I can see that. I, oh, I can't see the command prompt. Okay, so you're just like staring at being screen. Okay. Ah, I got an error. It says you're using pip version 7.1.2. However, version 8.1.2 is available. You should consider upgrading via the Python dash m pip install upgrade Python. Okay, so it's not an error, it's just a warning. It looks like everything is successfully installed, and I should be able to go to the next step of this. Up. Oh. So there's also a download, and then I need an IDE. So I don't have an IDE previously installed. Um, it looks like I do have some choices. There's PyCharm, which I heard a lot about at PyCon. Um, there's also Sublime, which I've heard mentioned before. I've never heard of Wing. Um, 
so it says Pi Charm is arguably the most popular option, but with so many features, it can be overwhelming um, when getting started. Sublime, this is more complex to set up for Python, but by far his favorite editor. You spend 20 minutes to watch tutorial videos and you save a lot of time. Anaconda is a great Sublime plugin for doing Python development. So since Python PyCharm is listed first, I figure let, let's install that one. Let's see if we can get that one up and running. So, let's see if I already have it downloaded. I may have previously installed it. I do have PyCharm. PyCharm 5, apparently. Professional edition. Ooh, fancy. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to switch screens. You can see my very lovely back um, backdrop there. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's showing up. Um, let me see if I can figure that out. I'm sorry. Please bear with these technical difficulties as I try and adjust things. I, I am kind of new to a lot of this stuff. So hopefully you will have patience with me. Here's the window back so you're not just staring at something completely blank. <laughs> oh, there's somebody watching. Hello, Adrenaline 684 or 681. So I'm trying to open up PyCharm. Hopefully, I am successful. And then we can move on to the next step in the bed. So after you install PyCharm, sorry, I know I'm going really quickly, it looks like I would hit the next button. So PyCharm is slowly opening. So let's see what the next step in this tutorial is. Oh, there we go. We got PyCharm to open. Okay. See if I can get it to full screen. No, I cannot. Okay. Well, let's update it. Can you guys see that? No, you cannot. Okay, let's see if this fixes it. There we go, okay. There we go, now you can see things. You can see the issues that I had installing, and you can see my pie chart, which is now up upgrading. Okay, so we did the installation instructions. We followed the installation instructions for Windows. When you hit the next button, it takes you to Mac. Um, so let's hit the next here and see what it suggests that we do. Now that just took us to the Windows installation. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Hopefully that takes us to the home page. I clicked up on the arcade at the top. Looks like it took us there. So we've installed.